Hi everyone, welcome to this week's market forecast for the week ending February 12th, 2021. My name is Justin Bennett with Daily Price Action, and in today's forecast, we're gonna talk about the Euro, the pound, the Australian dollar, as well as Bitcoin and Ethereum. The Euro USD may have put in a false break last week, which hints at a move higher this week, and the Australian dollar continues to carve what could be a bull flag. Lastly, Bitcoin and Ethereum have been on a tear recently. Bitcoin is breaking out and Ethereum is carving all-time highs. So I'll show you how high I think Bitcoin and Ethereum could go over the next few weeks. All right, so let's get to it right now. A quick disclaimer that today's video is for educational purposes only. All views are my opinion and are not intended as investment advice. Forex is a high reward, high risk business, and you should not trade with borrowed money or money you cannot afford to lose. See the description of this video for the full disclaimer. First up, as always, we have the Euro USD. And if you saw last week's forecast, I said that we could get a close below this 120 area. And I told members last week that if we did, this is not something I would short. In fact, I said that this very well could be a false break. And the reason that I said that is because the uptrend here has been intact for several years. Anytime you have a market that's carving these higher lows like this, and of course, higher highs over the course of years, and you're trying to go short here, you're going against the trend. I've seen a lot of people saying that this could be a head and shoulders right through here, which it very well could be. And for all I know, we could get a rejection from this area this week for a move lower. However, even this topping pattern, if this is a head and shoulders or this break below 120, all of this is against the trend, meaning that yes, the Euro could reverse from here. However, the trend is your friend, which is why this close below 120 did not interest me. And the fact that the Euro USD plunged lower on Thursday, retested this area immediately on Friday, tells me that this could be a false break. Anytime you see an immediate retest like this, it's not a good indication if you're trying to play a rejection from that level. In other words, if you were trying to short the Euro USD, for a move lower from this trend line, you would wanna see a close like this and then a slow drift higher, perhaps up to retest that trend line. But because we got a close below it, an immediate retest of this area, this signals to me that this right here is a false break, which could send the Euro USD higher this week. So we'll see how it all plays out. It's a little bit too early to tell. I need to see how the pair trades over the first 24 to 48 hours this week. But if we do get continuation this week, and we start to move back above some of these recent lows, all right, that could be an indication that we are gonna move higher back here toward 123.30. Alternatively, if we see the pair move lower from this trend line in the first 24 to 48 hours, that could signal that this breakdown is intact and a move lower is in store. But again, I don't like that this was an immediate retest. And as of right now, I'm going to treat this as a false break, in which case we could see the Euro move higher this week. Next up, we have the pound, and you guys know that I've been talking about this area between 134.80 and 137 over the last few weeks. You can see where the pair had held below this 134.80 area for several years. We then got the breakout on this candle, and ever since 134.80 has served as support on the weekly chart. However, at the same time, notice this low back here right around 137. This area has served as resistance again on the weekly time frame for the last few weeks. Now, last week looks like it closed above this area. However, it's too soon to tell. Just like the Euro USD, I need to see more information here to know if this 137 area is gonna act as support going forward or if this was a false break and we're about to see a move lower from the pound this week. So all in all, if this does hold, if 137 holds as support, we could very well see the pound move back toward 143.50 this year. But of course, a move like that is going to take weeks and months to play out. But ultimately, I'm not really interested in trading the pound. I think there are better opportunities out there. I simply don't like, even though we have an uptrend here, I don't like how choppy this pair has been over the last few months. Unless your timing is really good, it's very easy to get stopped out here just because the pound has been so back and forth. So it's up to you whether you trade it, but for me, I'm gonna look elsewhere. The Australian dollar had a nice bounce on Friday. If you saw last weekend's video, you know about this descending channel, which I also called a potential bull flag. All right, and this does qualify because we have a nice uptrend here over the last few months. The pair has since consolidated after reaching that area right around 78. So we've had this consolidation into this descending channel, AKA bull flag. Now, last week did pressure this area once again. So in last week's video, I said that even though this candle right here had a long lower wick, 
there was still a chance that we could see a move lower and a retest of this channel support. And we got that last week. And in fact, the pair looked pretty bearish all through this area. The way that it was pressuring, the bottom of this channel did look like it wanted to break lower. However, on Friday, we did get that pop back above 7640. All right, so going forward, this 7640 area should serve as support. All right, notice how it was resistance back here. And ever since it has flipped to support, last week did move below it, but Friday's close means that this area right around 7640 should serve as support going forward. And if this is indeed a bull flag and the Australian dollar is going to break out of this and move higher, I would like to see this area hold and the pair move back to retest this channel top. Now, of course, it's gonna take a daily close above channel resistance to confirm the breakout and send the pair higher. But if it does, not only do I think we could see a retest of 78.15, which of course is this high back here, but I do think that a breakout from this bull flag pattern, given the uptrend that we have here, could very well target 79.30 over the coming days and weeks. So we'll see how this week plays out, but again, 76.40 is going to be a level to watch. If we see a bounce from there, look for a move into channel resistance with a close above that, taking on 78.15 and perhaps that 79.30 area. Bitcoin has spent the last month or so in a broad consolidation pattern. All right, so ever since this high back here, right around that $42,000 mark, we've seen Bitcoin move lower into this descending channel. Now, this is the four hour time frame, and this pattern is something I don't see a lot of people talking about. Everybody's talking about a wedge that formed here on the daily time frame. However, this pattern right here, this descending channel, AKA bull flag, has played out perfectly so far. Notice how we had the break on this candle. We then had a retest right on the dot of this previous resistance level now support. All right, now this weekend we saw a move right above $40,000 briefly, but since then Bitcoin has pulled back again and it is retesting that new support area right between $38,000 and $35,000. So if we see a bounce from here, expect a retest of 42 over the coming day or two. Alternatively, if we see Bitcoin move below this recent low right around $38,000, this is going to be the level to hold in my opinion. All right, so if we see $38,000 break, it does signal that we could see a deeper pullback early this week into this trend line and also this horizontal area right around $35,000. Okay, so this is gonna be the area to watch if we do see Bitcoin move back below $38,000. Alternatively, if we see a bounce from this area between 38 and 38.5, again, I think we could see a retest of 42 over the coming sessions. And again, that is Bitcoin's all time high. All right, all that said, just like Ethereum, I do expect a big move from Bitcoin this month, although not quite as big as Ethereum in percentage terms, but I think that we are gonna see $50,000 this month. Now I mentioned this recently, but if you look at the FIB extensions from this recent pullback, it does line up exactly with $50,000. Okay, notice where the 161.8% extension right here comes in right at $50,000. So whether or not Bitcoin bounces from this area around 38 or moves lower and retests 35, either way, I do think that Bitcoin does present a good long opportunity for a move back into 42 with a break there taking on that $50,000 area. But ultimately, even though I am trading Bitcoin and Ethereum, I also have long-term holds here. I was buying Bitcoin last year when it was around $7,000. And same for Ethereum, I was buying that at around $200. And again, those are longer term holds for me that I'm gonna be holding throughout 2021. So even though I talk about $42,000 and $50,000, I think that Bitcoin is going to go much, much higher than that in 2021. But of course, as always, do your research. There are no guarantees, but I still think that cryptocurrencies, solid cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to continue to outperform just about every other asset out there this year. And last but of course not least, we have Ethereum or ETH USDT. Now, I talked about this one recently where I said that Ethereum was preparing for all-time highs. And if you've been following along, if we look here at the weekly time frame, you can see where this 1440 area was the all-time high, the previous all-time high for Ether. Okay, so this high right back here. And last year I was buying Ether through this area just above $200. I was buying it on the way up through here through this consolidation and also on this breakout. In fact, I was buying Ether as late as this area just below $1,000 before we got that break above $1,440. All right, now in the short term, 
CME futures launch on Monday, and it looks like a lot of people are getting a little bit scared of that. We're seeing some weak hands develop up here at this recent top. So if we do see ETHUSD move below some of these recent lows right here around 1560, maybe 1550, there is a decent chance that we could see a retest of this latest breakout point, which again was the previous all-time high right around that 1440 mark. Now, of course, if that happens, I don't have to tell you that I will be buying Ether. If we see a retest of 1440 this week, or we get a short liquidation event below that area to clear out some longs, I will be buying Ether through this area. And I still think, as I've said recently, that this month in February, I do expect Ether to not only move up to $2,000, but I do think that $3,000 is very much in the cards for ETHUSD this month. And that's simply because if you look at Bitcoin, what Bitcoin did when it hit $20,000, it went sideways for a few weeks and then it doubled in price in 24 days. So right now, Ether tested its previous all-time high here. And as I said on Twitter many times, the pair had to break out by February 4th in order to confirm that it was tracking what Bitcoin did at $20,000 and it broke out two days before February 4th. So in my opinion, I do think that ETH is going to double in price from 1440 over the next few weeks, which would of course give us a price right around $3,000. Now, of course, if we were to see a daily close below this area, back below 1440, that would be bearish for ETHUSD. But given this uptrend here and the fact that we are breaking above previous all-time highs and Ether is essentially in price discovery, I do expect this area around 1440 to hold if we see a retest this week. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave your comment below and be sure to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.